Well, hello, everybody. We are doing a live fine arts photo edit today. I'm really excited. Uh, if you were with me live earlier, I did a live broadcast photo shoot. It was a self-portrait photo shoot. And now we are going to edit one of the images live on air. I don't know how this is going to go, but I do live broadcasts of me editing over on my webinar platform all the time. This is the first time I'm trying it on Facebook. So if the technology doesn't work or doesn't cooperate, I apologize. I was just on a live broadcast on a different uh, Facebook page and we got kicked off in the middle. So I do apologize if that happens. Just kind of run with me here. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm Cam Robinson, creative photographer over at Cam Robinson Photography. And we're going to get started. So let me pull up my screen. You will be able to see my Photoshop right there. Take a look. Here is the image that we pulled today. Uh, and that is my original image. I did change the color of the flowers in my hair and a little bit of the dress so that I was prepared because it's in Lightroom that I do that. So here we go. Uh, this is my image. So I'm going to grab my clone tool and I am going to get rid of those flip flops. I actually use the flip flops as a way to know where to stand so that I am always in focus. So the first thing I'm doing is getting rid of those flip flops because we do not need those there on air and obviously that didn't work so well so I'm grabbing my clone tool and I am just going to clone that so that works a little bit better fantastic okay so I'm going to be editing this as a fairy tale image and the first thing I want to do is actually darken this down so I'm going to duplicate my layer and I'm going to switch to multiply and I don't want this everywhere so I'm going to mask that and then I'm going to grab a soft brush I'm going to make it relatively big. I'm going to put it on black and I'm going to paint. Whoa, wrong brush. My bad. I'm going to step back and then we are going to grab the correct brush. Every once in a while it ends up on a hard brush and I don't like that. So we've got to fix that. There we go. And I'm going to paint that off so that we've got some light here. There we go. And then I'm going to lower my opacity and I'm going to take away some of that light because we don't necessarily like all of that. And I think I'm going to lower the opacity even more. There we go. I'm just going to tap it off of the uh, trees behind me. And we're going to even that out just a little bit. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to take a look at the broadcast here if you are here thanks so much for hanging out with me uh go ahead and give me a shout in the comments let me know who you are where you're from why you're watching and uh, tell me what you want to see out of this image so the next thing i'm going to do is actually probably darken this down a little bit more i'm going to add a layer and i'm going to grab my brush again i'm going to grab a black color and i am going to put it all the way up on 100 percent opacity and i'm just going to start painting kind of where I want this darkness to be. And then we're going to change the opacity of the layer in just a minute. Now my program unfortunately is running a bit slow because I am live broadcasting at the same time that I am editing. So that slows everything way, way down. So I do apologize that it seems a little bit weird. Also, if you heard that, that was my puppy. I have her in, uh, in the upstairs, upstairs from here, because that was not grammatically correct. And she has apparently heard something and she is a little bit upset. So please don't mind her if you can hear her barking. So I'm going to kind of even this out just a little bit because I've got a little bit of a weird shape here. And I'm just going to tap this just a touch. And I'm going to pause long enough to see if that's going to cooperate with me. And then I'm going to do just a little bit down, whoop, down on the edge. And unfortunately, I'm going to, whoop, nope. There we go. I'm going to lower or uh, make my brush a little bit smaller and then I'm going to come across here. There you go. Okay. Now, obviously, we don't want it this dark, so we are going to back way off this opacity here. And there we go. Now we're going to add a layer mask and we're going to start taking off just a little bit. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, if you are trying to toggle between the brushes between the black brush and the white brush, you can actually hit that X key on your Mac and you can uh, get that to switch automatically without having to change with the actual little arrow. 
Now, I do not know what you can see because, again, this is the first time I am using this program on Facebook Live to do this. So I do not know if you are able to see where my arrow is or not. I'm just going to assume you can. Over on my other program, I know that they can't. Well, that is totally okay. I'm hoping you can see it, but if not, that's okay. Let me know in the comments. Can you see the arrows? I'm going to check in. We've got somebody joining us. Let me know who you are, where you're from, why you're joining us, and what you're excited to see within this live edit image. Um, I am not going to be leaving this like this. However, I want to add my color tone next, and then I'm going to do some tweaking from there. So the next thing I want to do is add a fill layer, solid color, and I am going to grab a purple color, and I am going to go down to color. Then I'm going to back way off of this opacity. You can kind of see how it's giving a purplish tone to what we're doing. I actually want a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so I don't like it around the outside. That is not going to be super awesome for me because that is really purple. So I'm going to take my black brush and I'm just going to start tapping off in the areas I don't want it to be as purple because I kind of wanted that inside to be a little more purple. Now, unfortunately, this is going to go super slow because I'm live broadcasting. So I do apologize. This is taking a second, uh, taking a bit longer than one would like. That's okay. So we're just brushing off of the opacity on this layer. Uh, let me know if you are still hanging out with me. Let me know what is going on. Do you have questions for me? If you've got questions about editing, about Photoshop, about any of this, ask away. Let me know. Hit up the chat box and tell me what is going on. Uh, I am still waiting, unfortunately, for this to... Oh, there we go. We're starting to lose some of our purple tones. It's just taking forever. I love purple tones with fairy tale inspired images. I am a huge fan of fairy tale inspired images. It's one of the things that I'm known for within my photography. Um, so I like to do a lot of purple tones and pink tones and gold tones because it always looks really, really cool. And I love showing off fairy tales. Um, if you know me personally, you know I'm also an author. And uh, my debut novel came out in March. And it is a Goldilocks retelling. So I'm a huge fan of fairy tales. I've actually got a couple more in the works that will be coming out in the not too distant future, which I'm really excited about. But you are going to see a lot of fairy tale inspiration within my images and within my books. And whoa, 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 what is happening? My opacity just got changed. No, no, no. Go back. Okay, lower opacity. And we're going to paint off in certain areas and paint on in other areas because I got some weird coloring going on. This is kind of on the trippy side because we are on Facebook, unfortunately. We are live broadcasting and it's kind of messing with my ability to do things on Photoshop because it's a little bit slow and a little bit touchy. So I do apologize. I am kind of tapping in some color here. I'm also grabbing water because I have been in live broadcast all day long and I have no voice left. So we are tapping in just a little bit more color so that we are balancing things out. Let me know what you guys are up to today. Did you tune in for our live broadcast earlier today where I actually showed you a little bit of the behind the scenes of how I do my photo shoots? Okay. We're going to tap off of the hair and the skin because we don't necessarily want that to be super purple like this. So we're just going to start brushing that off. And obviously we'll get in there and we'll refine this coloring so that it's not an issue. We're just doing a sloppy job right now just to show you what we're doing. So the next thing I'm going to want to deal with is the background. If we have this direct light like this, we probably do not have it all the way to the back of this image. So let me, let me show you what I mean here. If we've got the light streaming down like this. Oh, nope, didn't like me. Hang on. Raise up my opacity. There we go. We've got the light streaming down like this around my model. 
will the light coming through the trees here affect the woods back here? Chances are the answer is probably no. Now, obviously, we've got some light coming in here, light coming in here. It's not necessarily a dark thing, but our lighting, this lighting right here, is going to be specific to right here. And you can see the shadow here. We're actually probably going to make that a little more pronounced in a minute, but you get the basic idea. So we are now going to darken up some of that woods behind her, some of those trees. I'm going to grab dark color with my brush, and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger, and I'm going to lower my opacity, and I'm just going to start tapping in some darkness back here. Not everywhere, because I don't want it to affect the stuff up front. So if you notice, I'm not touching the trees that are closer up. I am definitely hitting on the trees in the back. And I am just darkening what we do not need to see in a strong light. So I'm hitting anywhere I see sky. Not that I'm trying to get rid of the sky, but I am darkening it just a touch, giving a little bit of a tint, especially with that fairy tale purple. It almost gives it kind of a night look. So I am just tapping on the trees in the background where I do not need this extra light. And we're just kind of taking this away a little bit. I'm even branching off into some of the side trees so that we can really darken this down just a touch. And again, not touching the trees up close, not touching the bushes up close as much as the stuff in the background. So we're just tapping away here. And then we are going to darken down the bush just a little bit. We don't want the bush to be totally darkened because we do want a little bit of light there. But we are going to tap down just a touch on that, just to differentiate it from the light that is hitting the model. And so we're just bringing this down just a touch. And then the next thing I want to do is actually go in and do a little burning. So I'm going to add a new layer, go down to gray for my color, down to soft light for my mode, and then fill with soft light neutral color, 50% gray. I'm going to grab my burn tool, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to emphasize some of that darkening that I just did. And I'm really going to ground it. Because yes, I had that darkening color, but I feel like the uh, dodge and burn really grounds things fairly well. And I'm just going to highlight that light again. Let me double check my comments. Um, we love hearing from you guys. So let me know what you guys are thinking, how you feel about this. And we're just going to start tapping down. And I am going to tap a little bit into some of this circle of light here. And we are going to do a little bit of contouring. Uh, I'm not going to stay on super long because I don't necessarily want this to be a long, long live broadcast, but I did just tap down the shadow a little bit. So that was a little more intense. Um, and then I'm going to add a second burn layer. So layer gray, down to soft light, and then fill with the 50% gray. And I'm going to refine this edge just a little bit so it's not perfectly straight. That's not believable, right? We're just going to tap in there. And we are going to add a little bit of a shadow in here because we have most of the shadow from her we also need it to be part of the skirt here. We're just going to bring that in just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So then the next thing I'm going to do is add some atmosphere. That's what I call it. Um, really, it's just like dust particles. And I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to grab a snowflake brush. Actually, I tap my brush first. Then I am going to grab my snowflake brush. And I am going to pick the smaller ones. And then I'm going to pick a warm tan color. And I'm going to raise up my opacity because I can lower that later. And I'm just going to start drawing in some speckles, a little bit of snow there, a little bit of atmosphere. And then I'm going to lower my opacity. And then I'm going to create another layer. And I'm going to raise my brush size just a bit. 
and I'm going to just kind of dust particle my way across there. Ooh. And I'm going to really lower that opacity. That's not something I want to be huge, but I do want it to be there. Bring it up just a touch, maybe. There we go. And of course, you can put a mask, a layer mask over this, and you can tap off it if it ends up somewhere you don't want, like the middle of her face or her eye or whatever. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, and I did not prepare this because I fail at life, is going to be to grab a texture. So let me pull up my textures. No. There we go. Okay, pulling up textures now. I'm going to go in and grab my favorite texture. I'm going to see if this works. This usually works really, really well on what I'm doing, if it would load. It's taken just a second, guys. We are going to drop a texture on here. We're going to change the blend mode from normal to difference, which is interesting because typically when I see people teaching uh, textures, they use something like soft light or they use screen or they use multiply. They don't typically use difference because difference tends to be a little weird. However, I found if you use difference on particular textures, not all of them, but on certain textures, if you use uh, difference, the blend mode difference, and then you lower the opacity, it looks really, really cool. Unfortunately, I'm getting the spinning wheel of death from my computer here. It is taking just a second for this to load. One would hope this is going to load. Uh, and the cool thing about the difference blend mode with this particular texture is that it is going to give me a matte finish. So it's going to take my grays, my gray tones, my black tones, my dark tones, and it's going to give it like a grayish matte look, which is really awesome. All right, here we go. This is my awesome texture. This is actually a Brooke Shaden texture. She gave it away on, I think, Creative Live. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> on her blog, anyway. And I absolutely love it. This is one of my favorites. And here we go. I'm going to go down to Difference and take a look at how weird this is. Yeah, weird, right? But if you start backing it up, it gives it this really cool painterly look. And the more you back it up, the cooler it looks. And it really, it grounds it. I love it. I think it's really cool. I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to put a layer mask and invert it. Because I don't want it everywhere. But I do want it in some of the corners. And I have to grab my brush that is not a snow brush. So back up to my soft brush. And I'm just going to start tapping in some of these brush marks. And I'm just gonna do that in the corners because I love how that looks. Okay. So here we go, not bad. We're getting there. Um, definitely need to do a little work with some of this darkness. So let me grab a new layer. Unfortunately, it doesn't like me. And it's going to take a minute. I do apologize for this. Let me check in with my questions. If you have questions, now is a great time to ask them. Um, oh, getting lots of comments popping up on my phone. Cool. All right. Let's see if it's going to let me get my new layer. Okay. Maybe. There we go. New layer. New layer. And... I am going to go down to gray, down to soft light, fill with my 50% gray. I'm going to grab my burn tool, and I want to start grounding this by kind of going around just the outside corners, and not everywhere, but just in some areas around the corners. I'm just going to tap in some burning, and this will kind of ground my image just a little bit. It's starting to fill in there. I know it's a little wonky unfortunately, with my program being so delightful. And I am tapping into the corner of, nope, I don't like that. I was tapping into the corner of my light ring, but it didn't work the way I wanted. So I'm actually going to add another layer. I'm going to grab my brush again. I'm going to grab the black. I'm going to lower the opacity pretty far down to like 15%. I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm just going to start tapping in 
just a little bit. Whoa, wrong color. We're gonna go back and we're gonna get the correct color. Sometimes I don't check my colors and it gets a little weird sometimes on occasion. And we're just tapping in. And like I said, you don't want it to be an exact cone. You just kind of want areas of light. And then we are going to try a gradient here. So I'm going to add yet another layer. I'm going to grab my gradient tool. I'm going to make sure that is on white. And I want the radial tool. And I'm just going to get a little stream of light going on here. And we'll see what happens. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. I actually want to do it a little bit further. So let's find out. Awesome. So then I'm going to layer mask that and I'm going to tap off just a little bit because it did go a little bit out of where I wanted it to go. And then the other thing I want to do, sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. I'm adding another layer. I'm going to grab my gradient tool, white radial, and I'm just going to come in here and just put a little bit of light right on the hair. But not that much. <laughs> So we're going to make just a tiny little light on the hair, on the shoulders. And we are going to tap this off of the areas where it shouldn't be. So right now I'm just adding the light. And then I am going to put a layer mask. I'm going to grab my black brush. I'm going to put that all the way up to 100% opacity. And I'm going to paint off of the rim because we don't need some weird rim around her. We just want it on. The actual skin there and we're going to lower the opacity just a touch there we go okay so I am going to do a little bit of refining work I'm going to make this tweaked to the way I need it to be tweaked but you get the general idea of what I am doing to create this image and this was from our photo shoot today uh, I hope you enjoyed our live broadcast, I know it was very pixelated because I was out in the middle of a place with terrible reception. So I do apologize for that. This is one of the images we created from there. It is very fairy tale like I hope you enjoyed it. You have uh, ideas of what you want to see next, what kind of images you want me to create next live on air, whether it is in one of my live webinars where I show you how to create a fine arts photography image and then turn it into a book cover because um, I'm doing it for both my photographers and my authors. Or if you have ideas for what you want to see right here on our Facebook channel, let me know because I will be creating more of these on a fairly frequent basis. Thanks so much for joining me. I have loved having you guys here. I really appreciate it. Even if you are joining my rebroadcast, go ahead and leave me some comments. Leave me some love because I want to know what you are thinking, what you want to see more of because I want to create more amazing things for you. I'm Cam Robinson, creative photographer over here at Cam Robinson Photography. You can hang out with me on my website, kmrobinsonphotography.com. You can hit me up at Cam Robinson Photography on Facebook and Instagram, where we're doing all sorts of things, social media strategy related for photographers, but also how to do photo shoots, how to do Photoshop, how to do the things that I have always done at Cam Robinson Photography. We just recently branched out into doing social media strategy for photographers because I am a social media strategist uh, for authors, and we do some really cool stuff with some of my best-selling authors, and now we're bringing that over to the photography world as well. So I hope you are enjoying. Let me know what you want to see more of and hit me up on social media because I want to hear from you guys. You have a fantastic day and stay inspired. And you can look for the final version of this photo a little bit later tonight after I do a little bit of refining. Uh, thanks so much for joining me, guys. I appreciate it. Have a fantastic day. Stay inspired.